this kind of access to this type of money could be accessible to anybody. Everybody should do it. And it's legal. Business to me is like watching a soap opera, always trying to anticipate what's happening. I'm excited when I get the newspaper. Can't wait to get home to read. I probably read about five, 600 articles a week. Wall Street Journal, the USA Today, Forbes, Fast Track, Entertainment Week. I like to know what the CEO is doing. I like to know who's in trouble. Once I read the articles and memorize certain content that I need, I create stories. He sits in this very small room at a desk, like one of those old school desks that has a big opening where you put your books. He's made it like an office. Nobody sits at that desk but Wall Street. He invests in stocks from inside San Quentin prison. And he helps other people. He's their financial advisor. He's called Wall Street inside the prison. Everyone knows him that way. We first heard about Wall Street through a friend who teaches yoga at the prison, Hatha Yoga, weekly inside San Quentin. Curtis Carroll, AKA Wall Street, grew up in Oakland, mostly homeless. His mother was addicted to crack, his grandmother too. Curtis and his brother ran the streets. Curtis hated school, fell in with a gang, paid other kids to do his homework. His first crime at 11 or 12 was robbing a mail truck with his brother. Someone told him the welfare checks were being delivered that day in his neighborhood. The envelopes were color-coded, they said. So those were the ones they looked for and stole. My number one rule is don't get what? Greedy. Don't get greedy. Criminals are greedy by nature. We want it all, all the time. Wall Street came inside the prison system at 17 years old. He was illiterate, didn't know how to read or write. One day he stumbled upon the financial section of the newspaper. Thought it was the sports section. He used to have his celly read it to him. This guy asked, what are you doing with that financial section? You don't know nothing about that. I was like, what's that? And a guy asked me if I played stocks. And I hadn't even heard the word before. He told me, he said, you know, this is where white people keep their money. And when he said that, I was like, ooh, like I stumbled across something here. Is there a regulation that a prisoner cannot invest in the stock market? Not that I know of. I'm Nancy Mullane, producer of Life of the Law and reporter on prisons. Wall Street feels that he is a natural. He was made to do this. Everybody knows Wall Street. Everybody. They seek his advice out. He pins up on the wall all his picks. You'll see the COs, the correctional officers, go in and they'll be writing stuff down. A lot of sergeants talk to him about it. He makes predictions, tapes them to the wall in an envelope, dated, and they check to see how well he would done. It was like, like a game they all played. If you buy a thousand shares, every 10 cent hike in the price is how much? My name is Troy Williams. I just paroled from uh, San Quentin State Prison after serving a life sentence. We had started a financial literacy group prior to me leaving prison called Free Man Capital. Right now, Wall Street is the CEO of that organization on the inside. He would teach the stock program. That's his realm. There's four steps. Every person on this planet that has made money has mastered these four simple steps. We easily Saving. have about 70 people in our class a week. Control. We teach the men personal finance, about stock investments, and retirement, and how to manage their money. That's it. You got a lot of older guys at San Quentin. I myself pushing 50. You know, a guy getting out who hasn't invested anything into his retirement at all. What is this guy going to do? Half the prison guards don't know who's managing their retirement fund. It's just somewhere in La La Land and it's being taken care of. The first time we came to San Quentin, the prison was covered in fog. We parked and the woman next to us looked over, rolled her eyes and said, fog line, good luck getting in. San Quentin, just north of Golden Gate Bridge, is right on the fog path that famously shrouds San Francisco. Perfect conditions for an escape, the passing of contraband the procurement of a weapon. Prisoners are kept in their cell and visitors kept out. It's the Bay Area, where fog and eccentrics and do-gooders pour into every nook and cranny of the region, including San Quentin. 
For two and a half hours, we sat on a bench outside the East Gate with all the others who couldn't get in that morning. The computer guys who teach coding to the men, the Mormon guy who goes in to talk to the inmates on death row, the volunteer at the San Quentin Museum who oversees their historical artifacts, including a cigar box full of tiny nooses made by the last hangman at the prison, the woman sitting nervously waiting for her husband to be released after 15 years. We waited for the fog to lift. My name is Clarence Long, and I'm in San Quentin Prison. Me and Wall Street were cellies at one time. He used to stay up till four in the morning, studying the stocks. I'd be sleeping. He'd be up going through his portfolio and reading paper. You know, when I learned how to read, I started reading candy wrappers and clothing logos, and it was like my mind opened to a whole different thing. I read articles and memorize content that I need, and I take a vanilla envelope, and I file them into a system. I used to see him teaching classes on the yard. People sitting in the bleachers listening to him. Once he showed me that you can invest in companies and get dividends, that's what got me started learning about the stock. The way it works is they have access to a phone. They can call anybody who will accept their call. This is Global Telling. You have a call from Wall Street, an inmate at San Quentin. I don't have any computer time. <laughs> I don't have access to be on the internet. I would call home, say, hey, I want to buy 1,000 shares of American Apparel. And when I'm on the phone with them, they'll be on the computer. Online brokers, E-Trade, they'll tell me what the closing prices are for the day, and I would know where to tell them what to buy. Wall Street really has some kind of far out ideas about finance. He doesn't feel that buying and holding long term is going to make it for him. My name's Tom DiMartini, volunteer at San Quentin Financial Literacy Program. Being a prisoner, he's willing to take more risks. If you talk to a hedge fund manager, he'll tell you we never go with penny stocks because the book says don't go with that. But I never read the books, so I don't know what to fear. Inmates in California prisons can have jobs. Most inmates make around 15 cents an hour. They don't get all of it. Some of it goes to restitution. Some of it goes to an account for the prison canteen. When you get that check for 50 bucks, you shouldn't be spending 50 bucks at the canteen. When your family send you $20, that's earned income. And if you're not putting it aside, you're not setting up that nest egg for yourself. There's a lot of guys in there who are trading through their family. There's Sam, who's got his daughters that he's teaching. They call every week. So what did you tell your daughter this week? What did she tell you? I'm in prison, but I'm on just the same playing field as Warren Buffett. I can pick the exact same companies. I can't buy as many shares, but technically we're just the same. Wall Street is 37 now. He's been in prison for 20 years. Word of Wall Street has started to leak outside of San Quentin. Small community investment clubs have been reading about him online. People living paycheck to paycheck, trying to get a financial toehold, are being drawn to his strategies and story. Wall Street, they tell us, has time they don't to study the market and get wise about money. Overall, the goal is to get the money to give it back to the community. When I look at how Bill Gates and Warren Buffett give 90% of their wealth away, I thought, what better way to help the things that I've destroyed? My sentence was 54 years of life in prison. I try to reiterate to the men that I'm not teaching you some for sure plan. I'm just teaching you to plan. It's fine to take the loss. I mean, it happens. You just know that it doesn't have to lead back into drugs or crime or gangs. These men are coming home. Guys who have been locked up for 20 plus years. You're giving 200 bucks and it's like, good luck. We're gonna pray for you, stay out of prison. Who do you want coming home? The animal that's been caged away for years, that's the same badass gangbanger that he was when he went to prison, or somebody that's coming home thinking differently. So this is your homework. Call home to your family, and I want you to say, hey, do you have a retirement plan? Do you have a 401k? You need to know everything happening with your money. Thank you.